My name is Jan Kosman, and I'm going to present our paper, Workload-Driven Lazy Discovery of Data Dependencies for Query Optimization. Data dependencies are data inherent properties that express relationships between attributes of a database table. The best known example are probably functional dependencies. In our paper, we also consider order dependencies, where one attribute orders another attribute, and unique column combinations that are also known as key dependencies. For real-world data sets, typically many data dependencies can be discovered, and these dependencies exist due to natural correlations in the data or the way how we model database schema. Now, can, data dependencies can be used for query optimization. For example, for query 10 of the TPCH benchmark that we can see here. After a couple of joins in this query, we have a large group by statement in the end. And the first attribute of this group by statement is the customer table's primary key, CCUST key. By the definition of the primary key, this attribute functionally determines all other attributes of the table. And because of that, grouping on other attributes than on the primary key will not change the result of the group by operation. This allows us to eliminate all other attributes from this group by and execute a potentially more efficient query plan. There are much more data dependency-based query optimization techniques, and we have compiled roughly 60 of them in a recent paper. The dependency-based optimization techniques can be classified according to the dependency type. So for example, functional or order dependency, and can be classified further for the application area, which could be an operator of the relational algebra. In this table, we can see these 60 techniques and the color indicates in which phase of query optimization the optimizations can be applied. So yellow, for example, indicates for cardinality and cost estimation, orange and blue different types of plan rewrites. Many of these techniques are not implemented in actual systems or cannot be used due to several challenges that we will investigate in a second. In our paper, we investigate three optimization techniques. The first is optimization 01, where the existence of a unique column combination on a joint column gives us knowledge that we are executing a many to one join, which allows, allows some um, more efficient joint processing. O2 that we have just seen on the previous slide and optimization three, where based on order dependencies, we are able to completely eliminate certain joints. More details on these optimizations can be obtained from the paper. As I have said, data dependency-based optimization is underutilized in practice. And this happens due to three challenges that we are going to discuss in the following. The first is data dependency discovery, meaning that we must have knowledge of data dependencies to be able to use them for query optimization. So data dependencies can be derived, for example, from schema dependent, from schema constraints, for example, from primary keys. But this leads only to a small amount of data dependencies and a fraction of all existing dependencies. There are sophisticated algorithms, data profiling algorithms that are capable of determining all dependencies, but they're usually very expensive if they determine all dependencies for the data set that they um, investigate. There's one more challenge for data dependency discovery. Uh, some data dependency types, for example, order dependencies cannot be defined in typical database systems. There's no way to model them. The discovery leads us to the second challenge. So if we have discovered a lot of dependencies, we need to select such dependencies from this large number of dependencies that are useful for the query that is about to be optimized during query optimization. For many data sets, thousands or millions of data dependencies exist. So the selection is a challenging task. And there's one more challenge, which we call dependency mutation, because data modifying statements such as updates or deletes can invalidate dependencies, make them untrue, or even create new dependencies. 
For query optimization, and in particular for plan rewrites, we cannot use invalid dependencies because thereby we couldn't guarantee the correctness of our query processing. Now, to overcome the challenges I have presented, we can ask the simple question, why should we even try to handle all dependencies? So why should we try to discover all of them, select the suitable ones from this large number of dependencies and bother maintaining a lot of them? We could just concentrate on the beneficial ones. But how do we determine the beneficial ones? And this brings us to our contributions. We present a system that is able to derive beneficial dependency candidates from the currently processed workload. Furthermore, we present a collection of techniques that are able to handle dependency mutation in an efficient way. We integrate our system into the open source database system IRAs and evaluate the performance impact and the overhead of the dependency discovery and selection with a join order benchmark and two TPC benchmarks. Let's have a look at our approach in more detail. First, we're going to look at the dependency discovery and selection part. Remember that we have the goal to only consider promising or beneficial data dependencies and not all of them. We are going to look at a simplified figure here. More details can be obtained from the paper. First, we are just um, seeing the database system here. It could be any database system. In our case, it is high rise. There's nothing much surprising in this part of the figure. Maybe only that dependencies can be used for query optimization if the knowledge is part of the database system. It gets more interesting if we're looking at the dependency discovery. The foundation for the discovery process is a set of user-defined rules that we can see on the right side here. These rules provide logic to derive dependency candidates from the processed workload, and in particular from operators that are part of this workload. The rules are assigned to certain optimizations. So for example, rule 401 is assigned to the, the UCC-based optimization that we have seen in the beginning. I said that the rules are user-defined, and here's a small simplified example for such a rule. It says that if we um, process a join operation, and if none of, the, of one of the relations attributes are needed for the result of the query, then we should create a UCC, a unique column combination candidate on one of the joins attributes. Of course, these rules could be more complicated and take other things into consideration. For example, the execution time of the operators or the amount of work that has been done by the operator. Now we are going to look at an example uh, for how the rules work. The rules go through the workload operator by operator. And in this example, we see that a group by operator is processed. And because um, only rule for optimization two is considering group by operators, it is the only rule that is actively processing this operator. If the requirements are fulfilled by the operator for generating a dependency candidate, then the rule extends the candidate set with a functional dependency candidate in this example that we can see on the right side of this figure. If we are processing another type of operator, for example, a join operator in this example, then other rules are considering whether this operator fulfills the requirements for creating dependency candidates. In this case, it is the join operator is processed by rule 401 and 40n, but only the latter one is creating a dependency candidate, in this case, an order dependency. In the next step, the dependency validator is taking the dependency candidates and actually determining if they are valid on the data that is stored in the database system. For the validation, we make use of the efficient runtime operators of HiRISE and of techniques from existing data profiling solutions, for example, of sampling. The dependency validator determines two different 
dependencies that are actually valid on the data, in this case, an order and a functional dependency. Now we are going to look at the evaluation of the dependency discovery overhead and the performance impact of our approach. Of course, the overhead of the dependency discovery depends on the dependency type, for example, or on the data set at hand. We investigated multiple benchmarks to see whether dependencies are widely applicable, and our experimental setup removed all schema-defined constraints, runs the workload, then triggers the dependency discovery, and reruns to workload to investigate the impact. We start by looking at figures for the real-world database join order benchmark. And we can see that the performance impact is substantial. So we are saving roughly 27% of the execution time of, for the complete join order benchmark, or 11 seconds. And even more interesting, in comparison to the overhead for determining dependencies, um, this is much more as the overhead amounts only to half a second or 1% of the workloads runtime. If we look at the TPC benchmarks, we can see that for the TPCDS, the overhead is again almost negligible, and the impact is still, still substantial by roughly 10% of the work loss execution time. If we look at the TPCH, we see a different picture. The overhead for determining dependencies is actually a little bit higher than the impact on the benchmarks runtime. However, it is still amortized quickly after a bit less than two executions of the benchmarks. And we should not forget that dependency discovery can run asynchronously in the background. For the evaluation, there are much more details given in our paper. For example, um, an evaluation where the different optimizations are not combined, like this table, but shown for a 1, 2, and 3. Now I want to conclude this presentation and we can say that data dependencies enable the generation of improved query plans. Our workload-based approach is capable of efficiently determining reasonable and beneficial dependency candidates. In our paper, we also present techniques that allow efficient handling of dependency mutation and our experiments show that the runtime improvements outweigh the overhead caused by dependency discovery. Thank you for your attention.